the different ways in which people have tried to live out the Beatitudes can be, be summed up really in, in two ways. The Beatitudes can quickly become a new kind of legal system, a new law, a new lot of Ten Commandments that you have to do or you're in trouble with God and with other people. So the Beatitudes then become a kind of legalism, a law, and that quickly drives people to frustration because they can't live up to Jesus uh, telling them that they have to be merciful all the time and poor in spirit all the time and humble all the time and pure all the time. So that's um, what leads people to frustration and despair. The other way of looking at the Beatitudes, though, is to see them as a gift from God. God saying, I'm calling a new people into being. They're the family that I'm making that follows Jesus. And they're to have the family likeness of Jesus. And that's why they're getting more and more poor in spirit and humble and longing for justice and righteousness and pure in heart and so on. So the Beatitudes as a gift telling us what we are becoming like when we follow Jesus. So it's not stuff to do, it's stuff to be. When we wake up in the morning, the stuff that we long for our lives for our family and our community and our church and our world, the stuff we long for is not the stuff that's relentlessly pushed at us by the media. We wake up in the mornings in a beatitude frame of mind, longing that the world will recognize humility and poverty of spirit and longing for, for justice and, uh, and, and purity of heart, you know, being single-minded, not, not hypocritical, that the world wants these things because the world is made in, in God's image. People are made in God's image. So it, instead, instead of needing to become like Charlie Sheen or Madonna or whoever it is, that, or, or uh, Dan Carter or, or whoever it is that impresses us, uh, the Beatitudes tell us that there's actually a different way of living in the world, a, a way that's going to outlive all of these alternatives. And that means in turn that we never have to be intimidated by, by, the, by the proud and the crafty and the cunning and the pushy. Never again do we have to keep on holding up this pathetic little flag saying, I'm here, please notice me. Because, in fact, we're, we're, we're following Jesus. We want to be like him. So how might we actually then use the Beatitudes uh, and uh, get, to get dragged towards uh, the, the rule of God, the, the kingdom of God? Well, we do it in a number of ways. We begin to notice that the people in our, uh, in our church or our family or wherever it is we are, the people that we, we admire... Uh, are not necessarily the people that are the pushy and the proud and the successful people. We, we begin to notice that we admire more and more those people who are, who are simply humble and, and poor in spirit and the people who, who long to make a difference in the world, the people who are moved to tears by the world's poverty and distress. Uh, we begin to admire those people more and more. And what that means is that we don't then try to be poor in spirit. Um, we don't try to be more humble. We don't try to be more righteous and so on. We don't try to be more of a peacemaker. But in fact, uh, we actually do become these things because we keep on imitating the Jesus who models all of these qualities and people in our uh, in our circles who who model some of these qualities as well. In fact, it, it's a funny thing about the Beatitudes. The more you try to be these things, the more elusive they are. It's like trying to be happy. I mean, if you go around trying to be happy all the time, you're going to end up miserable. But in fact, if you're around people who are relaxed and and, and so on. 
just you can see where I'm going with the analogy here, that by being around people who embody what Jesus wants us to be, uh, it begins to rub off uh, on us as well. It, it's the following again rather than the doing.